Okay, my last talk, <clears throat> I introduced uh, Descartes. I was talking about Cartesian dualism. So in this in this little talk, I want to I want to continue the discussion and talk about some of the problems of Cartesian dualism. <clears throat> Cartesian dualism uh, is one of the single most, uh, probably the single most important uh, doctrine in philosophy uh, for the last 400 years. Um, uh, philosophers and scientists are still dealing with it. And uh, so let me go over the, the, some of the problems of Cartesian dualism. <clears throat> for Descartes, uh, the world is split up into minds and bodies. So you've got minds and bodies. And the essence of, of mind, minds are consciousness or what Descartes calls thought, but he means, by thought he means consciousness. So minds are conscious. Bodies, on the other hand, are simply the essence of, of a body, material bodies, physical bodies, or extension in space. Extension in space. So this is the essence of minds is, are, is what consciousness, or what Descartes calls thought. And the essence of uh, bodies are extension in space. So you've got basically you've got uh, you've got th things that are I'll put CSC for consciousness, and over here you have ex extension, and these are substances. Minds are essentially conscious, bodies are essentially extended in space, and what this means, this is the very essence of a mind. Minds are consciousness. They have no extension in space whatsoever. So minds have no extension, and bodies have extension in space, but no consciousness. So that's important. It's not just that minds are conscious, and there are other things about them. No, that is the essence of a mind, pure consciousness. If there's no conscious experience, there is no mind. And if you have a mind, a mind is not extended in space. So a mind is, is not something you can see. Just think about your thoughts. I mean, have your... You can see a, a surgeon can cut into your brain and, and they will see a, a surgeon can see your brain because your brain is a physical organism. It's it's extended in space. So a surgeon can, uh, can cut into your uh, skull and see your brain, because, but your, a surgeon cannot see your thoughts or your feelings or your pains or your pleasures. They can't see them. OK. So minds are essentially conscious. Bodies are extended in space. Now, these are substances and by definition. Substances are totally independent of other of any other thing. Substances, by definition, if, if you have different types of substances, they cannot interact. That creates a problem. And the problem is the mind-body problem. So this is the mind-body problem begins with Descartes. And it's been with us, with philosophers, for uh, ever since, for about 400 years. And it's still with us. It's still with us. If you a lot of books uh, on, on the brain, if you go to bookstores and some of the uh, Descartes is the great uh, the bad boy nowadays. Uh, you a famous book in in, in uh, has dealing with the uh, brain. It's called Descartes' Error. Another one is Goodbye Descartes. So just like in, De, in Descartes' day, the the bad boy was Aristotle. Aristotle Aristotelian thought had to be killed off for modern science to emerge. In, in the, in the 20, uh, 20th century and 21st century, uh, in cognitive science and, and, and people who are studying the brain and the mind, uh, one of the great bad boys of today is Descartes because Descartes separated the mind from the brain. And once you separate them, it's like Humpty Dumpty, you know, it falls off the wall. You can't put Humpty Dumpty together again. Once you split the mind and the brain, uh, or the mind and the brain, the brain is the body, a physical object, it's, all, it's hard to get them back together. Uh, so that's a big problem. Descartes, we we so we don't we do know that they somehow they interact, okay? But the question is, there is whether it's inter they're, the, they're very closely connected, they're correlated, or there is a causal relationship, whatever it is. Uh, we know that the mind and the brain have something to do with one another. For example, uh, there's a problem with how do you go from the 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 body, for example, to the to the mind. I mean, and we know it, it happens, but how does it happen when minds and bodies are totally separate? Uh, bodies you can see, minds you can't see. My hand is a physical object. This is a physical object. Uh, by, a physical object can hit the, this. It can actually hit it, right? Be why can it do it? Because my hand is a physical object. It's a physical substance. The marker is a physical substance, so they can inter interact. 
My hand can hit, can hit this marker. My thoughts cannot hit this marker. My hand can because it's physical object. My thoughts are mental. My thoughts cannot hit this. That's the problem of that. That's the problem that Descartes is dealing with. How do we know that the mind, the body, and the mind, body and the mind are connected? But how does that happen? If you stub your toe, okay, your toe is a physical object. It hits a rock. One physical object hits another physical object. And we know that when you do that, there's, it's going to have, something's going to happen in the mind. There's going to be a mental effect. And what's going to happen, you're going to feel pain. Pain is a mental, is mental. So you've got pain, which is mental. Your toe hits a rock. Physical object hits physical object. And you have a mental result. So we know that, and this is very, it happens all the time. You you drink something sweet, your your mouth is, phys, is a physical object, uh, it's physical object, the water or whatever you're drinking is physical, and you're going to taste something. How does that happen? It happens all the time. Your body, uh, uh, your body encounters something in the world and there's a physical pain or something happens in the mind. How does that happen? That's a big problem for Descartes. And he actually never solved it. He never solved it. His And it goes the other way too. I'll talk about his solution in a second. There's a problem going from the body to the mind. Your toe hits a rock. You, there's an experience of pain. How does that happen when these are, when physical objects are not, are totally distinct kinds of substances from mental objects. There should be no interaction between them, but we know there is. On the other hand, you, we, it, the, the error goes the other way too. We have a mental, something in the mind occurs, there's a thought or some mental event, and that will have a result in the external world. For example, Right now, I can think about, I, I'm going to think right now, I'm going to raise my hand, okay? I'm, I'm thinking the thought right now of raising my hand. That's mental, okay? Now, my thought is mental, but it's going to have an effect in the physical world. Watch. I'm thinking my thought right now. I'm thinking, you can't see my thoughts, but I'm thinking about raising my hand, my arm. My, my arm and hand is, are going to go up. My arm is physical. My hand is physical. My thought about raising my arm and my hand is mental. My mental state is going to have an effect in the world. And look at it. it happened. It happens all the time. The mind can, uh, can re, uh, affect the body. Now, so we know that there somehow in real life, physical things affect the mind and the mind can affect the physical things. Descartes, how does that happen? Descartes' answer was that in the brain, there's an organ, and let's call this the brain, and in the, in the brain, there's an organ, uh, organ called the pineal gland. And Descartes believed that it's at this point that in the pineal gland that the mind and the brain interact. Somehow, the mind uh, is able at this point to, what, uh, to effect uh, to change what he called the animal spirits in the brain. I mean, he, 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 that's, that's the terminology back, back in those days, 300 years ago. Somehow in, in the pineal gland, the mind is supposed to be able to affect, I, I mean, the, the, the mind is supposed to be able to affect the body. Now, that doesn't really make any sense and it, uh, because by definition, mental substances cannot have an effect on physical substances and either and and f physical substances cannot have an effect on mental substances so that's descartes proposal he wasn't happy with it and no one was happy with it no one accepted it descartes had no other answer basically just gave up at that uh, he get he had no answer to it and no one else had, no one has ever been able to explain how the mind and the body are related now since that's the case what has happened since descartes is that people have Basically, it said, look, it, we can't get the mind and the body together. So one, one thing we can do is just say that there, there's not two things. There's only one thing.
You could say everything is mental. That's what the idealists said. Barclay, Hegel, people like that, Leibniz. Their physical things do not exist. Another way to deal with it is, there's other ways too, but it's another major way to deal with it is to say that there really is no mind. Everything is ultimately physical. So you get rid of one or get rid of the other. Um, anyway, that's that's so that's the first problem with Descartes called the mind-body problem. And it's still with us today, 400 years after Descartes. Uh, philosophers and scientists are still, still arguing about it. And we'll get later on in the course, we'll spend more time, uh, 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 several lectures on the mind-body problem. Another problem with Descartes that arises from Cartesian dualism is the problem of skepticism. So it's skepticism about the external world, skepticism about the external world, skepticism about the external world. The reason this is a problem for Descartes is that, as I mentioned in the last lecture, the mind has direct access to itself. So the mind only has immediate access to other to what's going on in the mind. It doesn't have direct access to objects in the world. Well, since we don't have direct access to the external world, that raises a big problem. Since we never see the external world directly, we have to infer it. How do we know there's an external world there if we never see it? That's called skepticism as about the external world. And that problem has, from once you begin with Cartesian premises, that the mind and the body are two separate substances, that seems to be an, a, a problem that cannot be solved. In the around 1800, a little before 1800, Immanuel Kant said that it's a scandal that no one has been able to prove that the external world exists. Uh, in Descartes' view, the mind and the world are totally separated from one another. So you've got the external world and the mind. We are a subject in a next in a world that we are separated from. We have no direct access to it. All we can know is what we perceive. All we can know are mental representations of the world, but we have no direct access to the world. And that raises the problem of skepticism. How do you know there is a world out there? Maybe, you know, it's logically possible that everything that I perceive, trees and the sun and everything else, is simply what nowadays we call virtual reality. There's nothing out there. There's just a movie going on in our brain, and it's not about anything outside our, 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 our brain. So that's a problem of, 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 of skepticism about the external world. Um, let me say something more. I'm going to say something about this, too. I, I just it came to my mind. Um, <clears throat> for Descartes, the bodies are pure extension. They do not have any consciousness. They do not think. The mind thinks. Now, most people believe that if you ask if you ask somebody, you know, how is it possible that we have we can think? How is it possible that we have feelings and we and desires and we can have pains? Uh, what what how do, what what causes that? And most people will say, you know, it's the brain. It's not my hand. My hand doesn't cause me to think. I think with my brain, right? That's what most people believe. Do we think with our brain? I don't think with my foot. I don't think with my hand. I think with my brain. Descartes did not believe that at all. Descartes would say that's that's crazy. The brain is a physical sub uh, a physical substance. A brain, the essence of a brain as a physical substance is simply extension in space. There's no consciousness whatsoever. Minds think. Brains do not think. Rocks do not think. The mind thinks. For Descartes, we have a mind and a brain, and they're totally separate. Okay, that's all I'm going to say for now. I'm going to do another lecture. I'll continue with some of the problems of uh, Cartesian dualism. Today, I just mentioned the mind-body problem, and then the problem of the ex external world. And the next lecture, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll continue it for probably the next couple more lectures.